Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Greg Young, and um, I did presentations last year on EFTE and FM2. And basically what this is is just an update of, of where I've gotten since then. EFTE, that's the one I've been working on the most recently. And it's a folding text editor. And there's a VIO and a PM version of it. Highlighting, some of the things I've added <clears throat> include help menus, which are the actual help for the different topics. In other words, help for C, help for IPF. Um, most of the ones I've added are either in OpenWatcom or out of the toolkit. And there's, <clears throat> ah. Surprise. Come on. Yes, it's fun when you can't quite see it. Okay. FM2 is mad that I didn't put it first. And so it jumped out here in front. Probably one quick. Some new highlighting that I've added is for the .trap files, um, OS2 resource files, and uh, the warp and WIS scripts. <clears throat> Features haven't changed much. Um, you have folding, column cut and paste, pretty much the standard sorts of things you'd expect in a text editor. <clears throat> One of the nice features, one of the features I like a lot is it does abbreviations. Once you remember what they are, you just type in a few letters and hit enter and it puts in, well, basically you can make it as complex as you want to. Um, there are abbreviations for several things, a couple of examples up there. <clears throat> can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Um, like my I will, I will talk loudly. <laughs> In your editor, is it possible to use, um, for example, the Win Create window or something, uh, hit F1 and that it opens up the help um, it and displays the correct page describing that, the syntax of that instruction? It doesn't do that, but what it does do is if you put the um, cursor on some part of that and then go up to the help menu and select the PM help, it'll take you directly to that. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I did um, added buttons onto the toolbar, which I created and um, <clears throat> And I also have it so you can now just pick off the menu to create a list file from the current file that you're working on. So that if you have a C file open, it'll go out and find the object file and create the list file directly for you. <clears throat> a lot of what I've been working on is the help system. I finally got EFTE so it actually finds its help all the time. I had to add it to the help path, but uh, what can I say? I added the MX guide, and then I added the Rex help, um, and it includes basically all of the INFs I, can fi I could find. Um, what will end up happening is since they're all added together, if you don't have them all in your health path, it'll just skip the ones that you don't have. <clears throat> WMake help and IPF help, both out of the toolkit. <clears throat> and expanded help is um, available from the Warpin developer kit and um, the API help comes up in the resource. <clears throat> and I actually created a help file for the editor itself. 
Of course, it's based on the old FTE help file, so it still needs, I will admit, some work, but it's a lot better than what was there before, which was nothing. A uh, bunch of different command line switches. These are also unchanged from last year. Some additional ones. <clears throat> And again, a handful more. Everybody will get the presentation so you can look more closely at that. Um, the configuration files have been redesigned since FTE to try to keep them so that I could actually update them without overriding your customizations. And there's a set of my, what are called my files. These are just a few of the examples. And what my main does is it overrides main so that anything, I could change everything in main and it wouldn't change what you had done to override it. In other words, I could add all kinds of different things to main and then put it back in without destroying your customizations. And that's true of all of them because all of them include a my whatever, my global, my... <clears throat> Um, file, which those files don't exist right now, but if um, you want to change something in one of those files, what you would do is just go in and create that file and add whatever you wanted to change, whatever parameter you wanted to change, and that parameter would override the parameter in the original file because of the way that the compiler compiles the configuration. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay, for changing configuration files, one of the problems with configuration files is if you break, th break something, EFT won't open. It'll just throw an error message. So what you want to do when you edit them is you go ahead and edit it and save it but don't close the current version, which is compiled under the old set of configurations. Then go out and try to open a new one, which will open the new configuration. If it fails, look at the error message, go back to the one that's still open and fix the error. And then continue to do that until such a time as the new one actually opens. Changes from FTE. <clears throat> the biggest change is that um, you don't have to, in FTE, you actually had to go out and actually recompile the configuration each time you changed it. In EFTE, you don't recompile it. It's automatically recompiled when the, when the editor opens. Um, fix some of the search parameters. Some of those crashed in pretty spectacular ways particularly the search for all. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> added some command line switches and just cleaned up a lot of the interface and consolidated all of the configuration files that were publicly available into a single package. Okay, known issues. Okay, let's start. Infrequent. I've discovered today that that's a lie. I crashed 14 consecutive times. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is, is it appears, and I work with Steve a lot on this, that the actual problem is eStyler, not, not EFTE. So not quite sure how I'm going to fix that. Um, I also found out I crashed in the exclude list. So it didn't do me any good. I don't know what, if I've excluded myself from eStyler, what I don't understand is why eStyler is being called. And you can see it. It's got a hook in somewhere probably. Yeah, you, you can see it in the trap. That, and it traps um, PM merge, is what actually traps. So that's another problem that I now I'm going to have to figure out how to fix. Maybe I can get the source code to eStyler. Um, 
There's another interesting one, and I found a second way to do it, is that uh, New View will trap when I do context help and I ask for the right word in the right help file. The example that I have here is that if I highlight return, the word return in a C file and open Whatcom C's help, it crashes New View. Now, I know that it's either a new view problem or a help file problem, because if I simply open the Whatcom C file in new view and then search for return, it also crashes. So it's, it's one of those two. I, because of the way the Whatcom C file is generated, I'm guessing that it's probably the problem, that it, and so I'll probably go in yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just so you know, the word or also crashes the Whatcom C. I found that out this morning. The last one is history and desktop <clears throat> are not saved. There, even if you have them set to be saved, if you use the close button. Now, if you use exit, works just fine. But if you use the close button, it doesn't. <clears throat> and I figured instead of having you ask me questions, I'd ask you questions. Anybody have any objection to me having warp, warp in put its help file in the help path? Nope. As long as it doesn't make it too long. <clears throat> Can you check that? Hmm? Will you check that then? I can't. <laughs> well, I probably could, but <laughs> I, I'd have to write a completely separate rec script to do it. Um, anybody have any strong feelings about where you'd like me to put it when I install it? Right now it installs just to the boot drive. Obviously you can put it any place, but yeah. the default is the boot drive EFTE. But there's, you have programs and you have tools which I can easily find and put them in. But you can define that in the warp in script. Yeah. So I can choose where I want to put it if it's not the default. Right. Okay, no but problem. Yeah, you can. You can put it wherever you want. It's, yeah. it's not that you can't do that. It's just that is there a particular place you'd like it to default to? And the last thing I'm, I'm tempted to do is remove the close button and the system menu close from. Can't you just call an exit handling that I, I, I could. And then everything is fine. But the, um, the toolbar has exit right below the button. I just can't remember to use it. <laughs> People are used to it. Yeah. Okay, FM2. One question. Yeah. Where can I find it? You'll be able to find it on Hobbs next it's on week. Hobbs. It's not right now. Okay. Because I was gonna up I was gonna actually upload it yesterday, but I couldn't get on the internet. <laughs> And so I won't be able to do it until I get home. If anybody really would like to have it today, I'll just I'll copy one onto a thumb drive and let you copy it. <clears throat> Either I managed to get them out of order or I got past one. Okay, where? If you had a wheel in your mouse, you'd build back. Or you can use backspace. Yeah. But on a mouse, backspace. there's no backspace. On a mouse, there's no backspace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, it's probably to get them out of order. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I'll start with the slide that I'm now starting with, but. Um, this is on viewing files. We have it, it, FM2 has a bunch of different file viewers built in. Uh, the one that I've, one of the ones that I find very useful is the archive viewer, which I now use as the default archive viewer for my warp install. Um, as you can see, it has 12 different archives that it'll do automatically. That all assumes that you have the archiver back end installed. Yeah. 
In other words, if you don't have zip installed or unzip installed, it does nothing. It's simply a front end for all of those various archivers. <clears throat> Has an any file viewer, which also you can edit some things. Um, and regular and extended attributes it also will look at. And you can edit some of the um, extended attributes. <clears throat> um, file organizing tools, you have compare directories, um, seek and scan files, obviously. Search tool does look for text in files. So there. What algorithm does it use to look? Don't, you know, I can't answer that because I didn't put it in, <laughs> and I've never actually looked at it. Okay, because I have a very fast uh, search algorithm that works at the end of the line, coming back, uh, and it works beautifully and takes yeah. very little processing power. Yeah, I would, I would tell you, except like I said, it's one, of, it's one of the sections that I really haven't looked at the code. I probably, I probably fixed two lines in it yeah. that simply were identified on a trap or something like that. Um, file collectors, so you can get a bunch of disparate files from different sites all together in one place. I do have bookshelf viewers so that you can pull up all the help files and all the in, um, INF files on the system. And you can create list files, actual physical files, that um, by setting parameters on files that you've highlighted. And in that list, you can include all of the parameters or as few of the parameters that you would get in the file directory listing as you like. In other words, you could include the subject even in that file. And the ones with asterisks, there's a standalone version, so you can run just it. <clears throat> there's a directory sizes tool, and there's a see all files tool, which basically will open all the files on a single drive into a single directory container. And some of those are huge. <clears throat> And then vTree is simply a standalone version for the tree. You can f configure a lot of different ways. There's a thing that is called states, which you get FM2, its containers, and everything set up the way you need them for some particular task that you do regularly. You can then save it as a state, which is just simply a configuration that you s Sort of snapshot. Yeah, it's just a snapshot of what it is, and then you can go back and just select that state the next time that you want that particular configuration. And it saves it down to the sort order and the containers and everything like that. So you can, you can customize it quite a bit. <clears throat> Even saves the tool, whatever toolbar you have. So if you switch toolbars, it will switch the toolbars for you. Um, has command line tools. Um, <clears throat> it has the commands, which are toolbar commands, which you can customize the tool, the toolbars. Um, because first of all, you can add commands, like I can put in build level is one that comes to mind. I have it set up so it'll, so I can just pick the command build level to figure out what the build level of a particular file is, and I can then make that into a button if that's what I'd like to do, so that it's on a toolbar, so that I can just click on it after highlighting a file. <clears throat> FM2 Lite, no idea why it even exists. It's sort of FM2, except that it doesn't do all the things that it does, and I don't think it has any improvements over it, but it exists, and I think it still works. And then vTree and vDirectory are really just a combination of um, <clears throat> a tree and a drive container that can come up kind of more analogous to, to the PM drives setup. So the, the V tree would be the initial opening of that drive where you have all the drive letters. And then once you open one of those, that would be what the V container is like. <clears throat> um, 
It basically will remember anything you'd like for it to remember. If you use the same command lines over and over, you can save those. You can save search patterns, filters, <clears throat> you know, basically pretty much anything you want that would be command line sort of operations so that you can quickly access those to redo them. And all of the recent changes are um, functional. What the biggest one was is that we moved all of the drive scanning to background threads, which on my multiprocessor mach processor machine was a real space adventure because it would load the tree container backwards, out of order, all kinds of odd things because of the race conditions it set up. By the way, it's been released, it's up on Hobbs, and no, it doesn't do the, any of those things anymore, but it was a lot of fun to get it so that it didn't. <clears throat> and because of two issues, one had to do with the, scan, with, um, the early scan ups and the way that we were doing it previously, the other had to do with the rename code which um, what we had done was a real fun thing. Everything in the container is essentially a chain. They're, they're linked to each other, but they're not linked backwards, they're only linked forward. So the fun thing is if you rename something in the middle and pull it out of there, guess what you do to everything beyond it? You leave it never, never land. So, Part of what we did to fix all the renaming stuff was backlinked everything so that you could cut it out and hook the, hook the two back together. I think there's still probably a couple of edge conditions where, where that doesn't work, but we got the vast majority of it because I'm not sure I thought of every possible way you could break those links. <clears throat> And that's what fixing the rename code and all the others were little minor cosmetic sort of things that, you, that I notice from time to time when I'm opening some part of the thing that I'd never used before and the dialogue has half the letters cut off, things of that nature. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Any additional questions? Great, thanks. Thank you.